there are just multiple things mom's gonna say today that I just have to agree with. And we will get into hanging with her just a little later in the video. To start out, if you want to make the absolute best bread pudding, you're going to need to learn how to make a strong bread. While you could get by using, you know, like your basic loaf, the feeling, even, you know, after eating whatever you made, the results are, I just got by. But why does a strong bread even matter for making something such as bread pudding? First, I guess let me stop using that term strong bread and switch to an enriched bread. It's all about structure. Enriched bread by nature is stronger and stronger is just another way of saying more chewier. This strength helps give your dish the framework it needs to hold together, soak up all the ingredients needed and ultimately be very present. Enriched breads come with their own flavor profile. Therefore, just adding to some of those undertones that help build and develop the taste composition. Lastly, and arguably overlooked when it comes to a recipe such as bread pudding, but may not be overlooked when it comes to a recipe such as French toast, because you're not dealing with pre-cut slices, you can control the size and the depth of those slices that you need. All this to say, this is why we're starting out with how to make a vegan brioche. There's not a ton of ingredients here that are interchangeable. Each ingredient here is gonna play a crucial role in doing something to your bread. But let's go over what may be more easily to control. Your absolute best option for flour is gonna be a bread flour because that flour is made specifically to make breads. It has more protein, therefore is gonna hold just a better structure overall. Other flours you can use and get pretty good results would be like an all-purpose flour or a whole wheat flour. As far as my gluten-free folks, if you really wanted to make this, the best flour I could recommend is some type of one-to-one all-purpose gluten-free blend. I know that Bob's Red Mill makes one and also King Arthur. Keeping in mind that gluten-free bread making is a much different beast than making with a gluten. So if you haven't worked with it yet, I wouldn't make this the first recipe you try. Your sugar is a bit more interchangeable. You can go with a cane sugar, like what was used in the recipe, or you can go with a brown sugar, or even a maple syrup. Maple syrup carries a very beautiful taste, which would really do well in a recipe like this. It is also on the more pricier end, so that's something to keep aware of as you're looking at what you wanna use. This bread isn't one that will work without yeast, but I do have a recipe for making cinnamon rolls with without yeast, so if maybe you're not going for a bread pudding for the holidays, you could go with something like some cinnamon rolls. I could eat cinnamon rolls anytime. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, dinner. There's some plant-based butter in here. You don't have to use that, but it is something that's really gonna help enrich the dough as well. Using it is gonna result in a more softer dough. Going into it without is gonna result in something a little harder, but it would still come out. As you need, if your dough is getting drier because you decided not to put any plant-based butter in there, you may need a little extra liquid, so pour a little extra water as you're going forward. But the biggest ingredient here in making your vegan brioche that's really gonna help enrich rich the dough is going to be that sweet potato. And you have a few different options you can use to really make this work. So obviously you can use a sweet potato like I did, or you could use like pumpkin puree. Actually, now that I think about it, any orange squash would work. You could also use the basic potato, but if you want to get that orangey yellow looking color that you typically see on a brioche that you had before going plant-based. Sprinkling just a pinch of turmeric would really get it there. Now, if you really wanted to get fancy, you could use something such as bananas or even applesauce. Applesauce would be a bit more neutral, similar to the previous options I went over. While a banana would obviously be just a bit more forward in flavor, which would go great if you're making your dessert something banana flavored, or even making the bread itself a bit more edible for people who just love the flavor of banana. I think I said enough. How about we get mom in here and get some tips on how to make the absolute best bread pudding. This is the infamous mom. And we're gonna go through some questions to find out how we make the perfect bread pudding. So first, let's ask her some questions to get to know her. So first question for you is, what is your favorite food? My favorite food is, um Chicken, I love chicken. chicken. Chicken and rice, Jamaica rice and peas and chicken. 
Okay, Jamaican rice and peas and chicken. Yes. So it's safe to say that you'll probably never be plant-based or vegan. No, because I eat a lot of vegan food, especially okay. when I come here. Okay. So you you might be vegan at some point. So you may get rid of chicken at some point. Yes. Yes. Okay. Definitely. All right. Well, I guess there's hope, right? Yes. All right. <laughs> did someone teach you how to cook or basically how did you learn to cook as good as you do? I learned to cook from my mom. Most of the things I cook is from her. Mm -hmm. She... um. She was a good cook, but she don't season a lot. She liked to boil stuff. Boil. So yes, okay. she liked to boil food. Everything she'd boil, vegetable, you know, she loves stuff like that. Yeah. When you say she didn't season a lot, did she, did you learn the season by watching somebody else? Or were you just like uh, experimenting with seasoning? Like, how did you get better there? No, I started experimenting with season as yeah. I grow. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so a good way to learn is just trial and error. Yes. Speaking of seasonings, what would you say is like your favorite seasoning or herb to use? Everything, most of the thing I use, I use karma masala inside of okay. it because it's an Indian um, base, you know, season and my yeah. mom is full-blooded Jamaican Indian. Uh, ginger. I use ginger. ginger. Yeah, yes. that's I a good ginger one. Ginger a lot, and I love garlic. Okay. And oh, we love garlic, right? Yes. And then, basically, we use the regular seasoning: uh, onion powder, garlic powder. Yeah. You know, the regular. Some of the basics. Yes, yes. Okay. And we love spicy stuff. Spicy stuff. Like in um, pepper. Uh huh. Jamaican Scotch barnet pepper. So okay. So we always cook spicy stuff. Right. Yeah. Those you know that ones. and dad know that. Yes. <laughs> Although dad doesn't like <laughs> <Right>. spice <laughs> like that, he will still power through yes, it. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> what is um one kitchen tool that you feel like you just can't go without? A sharp knife. A sharp knife, yes, yes exactly. Yes. See? That's that's it's all about the knife. Yes. And that's the key for the kitchen, a sharp knife. Yes, exactly. No sharp knife, no good food. No. <laughs> I think the audience may want to know, what was your reaction when you found all my peanut butter and jellies hidden <laughs> under my bed? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I really don't remember that far, but I was losing my mind. <laughs> I could never believe you haven't eaten lunch in almost Oh my god. Six months. That's <laughs> how much peanut butter and jelly I found under your bed. See? That's what uh trying to impress a girl will do. Is just have you six months of peanut butter and jelly stuck under your bed. Yes. I was straightening out your room because you straighten out your room but you you push everything aside. Yeah. Like other kids. Like you know? most kids, yeah. Yes. So I was straightening out and I'm like, what is that? And when I look at it, I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Where, how, well, how did you find it? Was it something sticking out? Like what happened? No, I think I was pulling off your cover sheet and when I look, I seen it Yeah. under the back spring and then when I lift up the back spring, I seen it and it was some under the bed also, under the <laughs> back spring. Under and I the was like, spring, yeah. Dad, you wouldn't believe this. And when Dad come and see it, he was like, oh my goodness, that's poppy, that's don't surprise me. Oh my goodness. What does he mean that doesn't surprise yeah. him? Because you know, you always do stuff that you know surprise us yeah. all the time yeah but he always prepare for it got yeah. it got it all right good stuff all right so today we made bread pudding um how about do you have any tips you would give to say you know how to make the ultimate or the best you know bread pudding um i think when after you make your custard okay you soak it for a good 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. You s make sure you soak your bread that is sap up everything, all the good, you know. Yeah, nothing left behind. Yes. Okay. And my bread pudding, I like to put a pinch of um, Jamaican white rum. I okay. Think that is what polish off everything for me. So that that's what helps your bread pudding set apart from everybody else's bread pudding. Yes, basically Jamaican do that. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, pinch okay. of white rum because mostly we do it holiday time. So, you know, yeah. we have the touch of a white rum inside. Of okay. It. So since you guys make, you know, bread pudding mostly around the holidays, you add a little white rum. And what 
what would be a pinch to you? You know, chefs sometimes they say pinch, and then you just see them dropping a whole bunch of salt everywhere. I, but what would be a what would be a pinch? A, a pinch, probably one teaspoon, because uh, it's very strong. Okay. Yeah, one teaspoon. Okay, yeah. specifically yeah. Jamaican white rum. Yes, yes, Got Jamaican it. pure white rum. It's have to be Jamaican white rum. Yes. Okay, and then after I would say forty-five minutes to an hour, mm -hmm. someone is looking at their bread and realizing that it hasn't quite soaked up all of the custard. What would be your advice to them at that point? Well. Should they continue the recipe and just move on or should they let it sit a little longer? You sit, yeah, sit a little longer. Yes, okay. yes. Because right. we have to get all the custard to make up a, a good bread pudding. So Perfect it's a, yeah, pudding. so it's important to have all of that flavor inside of there because anything left out probably won't make the best bread pudding. Yes, and after I pour the custard, what I do, I get some nutmeg mm -hmm. and I sprinkle it on top of it before I push it inside the oven. Okay. I touch a nutmeg. So the uh, little things to just separate the bread pudding, a little pinch of nutmeg on top? Yes, yes. Or do you like fresh nutmeg or are you okay with the I love dry? fresh nutmeg. You know I always grate my nutmeg. I'm old fashioned. Yes, so yeah. I always grate my nutmeg and just sprinkle yep. it in trash. All right, perfect. So bread pudding, I feel, is generally made the same way across you know multiple um, different cultures um, usually all the same ingredients but is there a particular ingredient you mentioned you know white rum but is there a particular ingredient that you would say just do not make bread pudding unless you have this particular ingredient um, I like raisin Raisins, okay. Yes, I yeah. like raisin my bread pudding. Yeah. So I don't make your bread pudding without raisin. Nice. And I to, as I told you before, if you don't like raisin, you can blend it. Yes, yes. So you can that was blend a great it tip. and it turn out good. So that's it. I wouldn't do my bread pudding without raisin. Yes. So mom had mentioned to me um, last year when I was making a bread pudding and I was experimenting with one that because she knows I don't like raisins, whole raisins in my food, at least I didn't used to. I love them now for some reason but before I didn't like that. So she gave me the tip of blending up the raisins so that way it could just be a part of the custard, but yet you could still get the flavor out of the raisins. Right, right. right, right. Yeah, it was perfect tip. I know when I made my first bread pudding, I felt like after tasting it, I had some opportunity in how to better make the bread pudding. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I didn't exactly know how to fix it. I just know it was a little mushy. Mm -hmm. um, I know that it felt like maybe I didn't use proper bread or something. Mm -hmm. um, so what are some tips you can give to someone looking to make bread pudding for the first time? Okay, um, I like um, uh, Jamaican bread. What okay. I do is um, we slice it, mm -hmm. you know, the Jamaican bread. We okay. slice it and then we do it cube and then we put it inside of it. Okay. If not, you can use, um, what do you call a bread again? The one, the, the Jewish bread and it's have the packet in it. I saw you make it before. Uh, Hala? Yes. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Yeah, that's make a good bread pudding. Okay. So, uh, so what it sounds like um, you're saying is you want to use a strong bread. Yes. Yes. You, you don't want to use like your basic, you know, white bread loaf or something like that. You don't really want to use those if you can. You want to use something that's a, a bit stronger. Yes, but if you choose to use that, it's fine. Okay. But that's what I like to use. Yeah. Why do you think using a strong bread is good? Because it gives you a more sturdier you yeah. know, pudding to eat. It's not mushy or softy. Or, you understand what yep, I mean? Yeah. Yep, I would agree. Give you a more sturdier you know, bread pudding. I would I would definitely agree there. Because the, sometimes after your bread pudding, you want to pour a little, you know, maple syrup or whatever you, you very know, true yeah some yeah. people just like pour stuff on it otherwise yep. you know for you know with a cup of coffee in the morning and mm -hmm. stuff the bread itself are you um someone who likes to immediately slice the bread and get it in there or are you letting your bread sit and get stale at all or anything like that how do you do about that yes i i mean i let it sit it can sit for like um at least a, a week, five days, four days, it's okay. still fine. Yeah, I like when it sits, but yeah. I like when it's sturdy. I don't want it to go in the custard and get mushy, even if I have to stir a little bit. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. No, that's that's really good. Mom, this video is gonna go up probably right before Thanksgiving. Okay. I know if I was looking to make a bread pudding, you know, you know, for Thanksgiving with people coming over, there's so many other meals that you're trying to make 
um, you know, to prepare for people to come over. It's nice to have some things that you can make ahead of time. Would you say bread pudding is possibly one that you can make ahead of time? And how far in advance do you think you could if you can make it ahead of time? You can do a week. Okay. A week is fine. Yeah. Because that's what I do. I make my dessert ahead of time. So yeah. a week is fine. Yeah. A week, four days, you know, whatever time you have. You yeah. Know? But do definitely make it ahead of time. Not on the same day. I wouldn't make it on the same day. Because the more it sits, I just feel it tastes better. I don't know why. Yes. Yeah. I was <laughs> going to say that. The more it seems like the ingredients for some reason yes, just kind of yeah. Yeah, mesh with each other a lot better. So are you are you saying make it as in make it and bake it, you know, a week in advance or, you know, four or five days in advance? Or are you saying like make it, it's sit and then when you're ready and you need it. You no, know, make it. it and bake it. Make it yeah, and bake, bake it. Yes. Okay, cool. So make it, completely bake it, and you can have that bread pudding last for at least up to a week before people are, are yes, coming. Yes, 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 yeah. definitely. Nice. And then the other the other option um, or the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, if you're making it, you know, in advance and everything like that and you want it to be still fresh, mm -hmm. would you say making it a week in advance? you still feel like it's just as good or do you feel like it's lost some of its quality? Oh no, you don't lose the quality. I def to me, I think it tastes better. Okay. Yes, because after I finish baking it, I rest it in the fridge after, you know, it cool. Yeah. And then that day when, you know, my guests come in, I just take it out, you know, for that day. So, so naturally when you're making bread pudding, when you're done baking it, you don't even want to touch it right away. You want to let it cool and you put it away. Yes. yes okay. Yes. So regardless if you're making your bread pudding for the, you know, the, you know, Thanksgiving or anything, it sounds like making it in advance, giving yourself a few days is yes. going to make it the best possible yes. bread pudding. Yes. Last question I got for you for anyone making bread pudding and they feel like they completely just jacked up the bread pudding. They took it out of the oven. It's, mm -hmm possibly mushy mm -hmm. or it's falling apart is there anything you can do um to save the bread pudding at that point hmm. that's interesting uh, <laughs> i never really think of that but that's a good question yeah <laughs> what would you do um hmm. my thoughts are possibly if if it's mushy, uh -huh. um, that maybe you can get it back in the oven and hope that, you know, as you continue to bake it, possibly the custard would set a little bit more. Do you think that would help at all? It probably will, cause it probably dry out, you know, probably dry out a little bit more, but it's hard to get that mushy out of it cause it's mm -hmm. already, you know, set that way. Yeah. You know, but it probably will, yes. Yes, probably will. So, if you can't say say you can't bake it longer and get it to set a bit more mm -hmm. is there another food breakfast dessert just just any other option that mm -hmm. you think people could be like you know what since i couldn't get the bread pudding to do what i wanted it to do i'm just going to make something else with the same ingredients so while you think about that i'll give you an example mm -hmm. like sometimes when you make cake Mm -hmm. right and then the middle of the cake falls in and you're like man all right well the, the middle of the cake is possibly raw mm -hmm. so you don't really have much of a cake you just have like the outside mm -hmm. you could possibly break up the cake and you can kind of squish it together and make like a little um they're called like cake pops mm -hmm. um so you can you can do different things in order to utilize the cake mm -hmm. do you think that there's something else you could possibly utilize the bread pudding for if you happen to just really jack it up and it's just mushy or do you think like you know what you're just gonna have to start over probably you could make a sweet potato pie okay <laughs> okay you can make a sweet potato pie specifically a sweet potato pie yeah because it's it's easier and you know you can't go wrong with that okay you know with a sweet potato pie you can't eat mushy yeah some people make it soft and some people make it hard so i would just you know, whip up a sweet potato pie. Okay, got it. So you're saying that if you messed up your bread pudding, just put that aside. Don't even worry about it. Mm -hmm. uh, probably going into making a sweet potato pie is your best option to yes. make sure you still have something. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, now that's a, that's a good idea because obviously you don't want to waste your time on something that basically by the time your guests get there, 
um, which hopefully you're making it a few days out, right? Yes. So you're okay, but you don't want to waste your time on something if you can do something else and just have that out, off your mind. And if it's the same day you find out that it's mushy, let's say you cut it mm -hmm. a piece to um, eat yeah. before your guests to see what it tastes like and you didn't like it, you can go with a box cake. <laughs> okay, go with a box cake. Yeah, just go get go a box a, mix. Yeah, a chocolate. Yeah, get a box Nothing cake. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You know, hide your stuff in it and yeah, yeah, make so, a box cake. That's so, easy. Yeah. Anyway, so either way, you're gonna try to figure it out Something, yes. around, but not really utilize the the bread pudding. Yes. Got it. And you could also put out a bread pudding. Some people would probably like it. Don't throw it away. Just, <laughs> you know, keep it. Don't put out the away. mushy bread pudding. Yes, Do yes. you give anybody a warning that it's mushy or do you just let people taste it? I probably say, well, this is not my best bread pudding. Something go wrong, but you yeah. guys can taste it if you like it. That's fine. But I have had the stuff here, you know, that I prepare. Okay. All right. Well, look, if you could ever come to mom's house and you see a mushy bread pudding, you'll get a warning but you can still taste it. Yes. All right. <laughs> Good stuff. Mom, thank you for being on. Okay, okay. Anything you, you want to say to anybody? Hi, guys. I know my, my papa talk about me a lot. So my girlfriend in church told me that she see, you know, my papa talk about things we do all the time. And I know you guys probably ask about me. So hi, guys, and it's nice meeting you. There you go. All I right. hope you guys like me. <laughs> <laughs> They'll love you, Mom. Okay. They love you, okay. and they love my baby whisk. Okay. That's the that's the two loves that we happen to have for this channel. Okay. Along yes. with along with me, hopefully, but we have to walk with love every day. Exactly. That's, yeah, that's the key to everything: love. We have to love everybody. That might be a, an additional saying that I say now. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Good that's stuff. Good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, love you, mom. Okay, love you too. Bye bye. Thank you so much, mom. I love you. The full recipe you could find linked at my website, makeitdairyfree.com, or you could head down to the description and hit the link. Thank you so so much for watching. Until next time, believe in good, and as mom said, walk with love. Peace.